coming to you from our brand new lab in Vancouver, Washington. So you're getting a quick sneak peek at that today. We're going to spend some time today using the Ransberg number two, also called the Deuce. It is a self-contained painting apparatus. I use the word apparatus because it doesn't actually spray. It uses a handheld bell that uh, electrostatically charges the paint and essentially flings it off and it's attracted to the grounded workpiece by electrostatic charge. Probably the most popular, you'll see it in things like school painting uh, lockers, uh, very minimal overspray, hand railings, and today we're actually gonna use it to paint the exterior of our brand new spray booth because guess what, I wanted it green. So uh, our painting contractor is here. He's gonna give us a crash course on a few of the things. Essentially, as of right now, we've set it up as it comes out of the box. If you want to tip the camera down for me, I'll go through all the components that are on here. So it comes with a 2.8 gallon pressure pot. Inside of that is where we're going to put our material supply. We're simply using a one gallon metal container that we're putting inside of the pot so it's very easy to clean. You can also use liners. It has a um, Cart mounted air compressor, which is what's feeding the pressure pot, and that's the only source of, of fluid delivery. So, so we come out of the pressure pot through a fluid hose, and we're feeding to the gun. The other cable is simply the electrical cable. You can bring the camera back up. So then we'll go through what's on the gun. So the bell is not on here currently, so that you can see how it's delivered. This is the fluid tube. And you're going to be able to, to adjust that. You're going to put it at approximately the four or five o'clock position when the bell is inserted, and that's what delivers tube to the circulating bell. And then you're going to have the electrostatic uh, contact piece. So as the outside of the bell is turning, this is making a secondary contact point. Okay, so we'll now have Mike, our painter, come in and put the bell on so you can see how that works. We'll move these back to the insert position. There's a tiny little set screw. You'll need a screwdriver, a flathead, right there. Okay, you're just gonna press, let's do it so the camera can see. You're just gonna press firmly with two fingers on the opposing side. And then you see that set screw. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, now that the set screw has been tightened, we're gonna move this black piece, it's the contact, out so that it's making physical contact with the external black part of the bell. And then we're gonna move the fluid delivery piece so that it's squirting paint inside to the inside of that cup, okay? So at that point, I would simply turn on the on-off switch on the back of the gun and that activates the mechanical rotation. So. That's the, just the basic setup of it. When you go to clean it, you're gonna take that bell cup off, clean it with a very soft bristled brush, purge this with the appropriate solvent using the pressure pot, and that's how it works. You always wanna make sure that this is grounded and that your workpiece has its own ground, and that we've also taken this to a firm earth and electrical ground. This is a ground cable that comes on the unit as well. Lastly, in the kit, if you buy this, you'll get some dielectric grease. All of the electric fittings on the gun and on the power pack, you wanna lube with that. It just improves the conductivity and make sure that there's nothing that's missing. So those are the, the do's and don'ts. Um, safety wise, you wanna wear leather soled shoes or some kind of a shoe that will let you be grounded to the floor. Uh, it's important that you are grounded. If you wear 
rubber shoes like tennis shoes, you actually will build up the charge and then when you touch the ground, you'll feel a shock because you acted as a capacitor. Next thing is, you can tell I'm wearing these stylish green glasses. Most important thing when working around electrostatics is wear eyewear. The best ground on your body is your eyes because they're covered with fluid. It's more conductive than the rest of you and it'll go right in your eyes if you got closer than the workpiece uh, to the applicator. So also always use a bare palm. If you wear a glove, cut the palm out because you're actually also grounding yourself when you grab the metal gun handle as well. Um, so those are the do's and don'ts. We'll go ahead and get this set up on the outside of the booth and we'll show you the operation. Uh, it's a really cool tool. Okay, so we have loaded our green paint, which we've measured and mixed. Uh, we've checked the uh, ohms of resistance. You wanna be less than one mega ohm of resistance. There's a solvent chart that helps you know or, or maintain the polarity. There's nothing that really lowers it. You can only just go up. And there's a conductivity meter, which you dip in the paint and it measures the resistance. So you need to be in, a, in an appropriate range. There's electrostatic um, ready-made paint. I suggest that's probably a first place to start if you're novice at this. So on the back of the gun, we've got that fluid tube like we said, the 430 position, it's going into the, into the bell cup. And then on the other side here, you can see that black connection has to be touching the black part of the outer ring. And that's where the uh, uh, electricity is flowing through. Okay, so on the back of the gun, I simply have the on off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and you'll see it's now rotating. Okay, when I hit the trigger, paint would be dispensed. So I'm going to give this to Mike. He's got his respirator, his safety glasses on, and a bare hand connection so that he's touching the ground. And we're going to go ahead and start painting our powder booth, or our paint booth, which has already actually been powder coated, but we're going to paint over top of the powder coating, which is something I get asked all the time is, will electrostatics work on top of a previously painted surface? And the answer is yes. So we'll go ahead and watch Mike. So this color is a bright green. It's not gonna cover real well, so we're gonna plan on doing a couple of coats for the coverage. The circle method that he's using is pretty common. Helps everything uh, flow and go out. And you can see there's almost no spray whatsoever. Perfect. Turns off the bell when he's ready to stop for a minute and reposition. And you can see just like that, very little overspray. Fairly good working speed, not as fast as uh, airless or something like that, but the lack of having to mask as much um, makes it ideal for something like we said, schools, lockers, uh, things like that. If you're interested in uh, quotation technical support or help, please visit our website, which is totalfinishingsupplies.com. This is the Randsburg number two deuce is what you can look up. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for your time and paying attention to total finishing. Thank you.